Hey guys, Chip here. So as many of you may know, recently Anthony and I introduced a new product called Slice It. And Slice It was great for a number of reasons, which I'm going to get to here in a minute. But I just wanted to mention to you that we've updated this product in a significant way. And we've added the ability to bend objects after they're sliced. And the reason why this is interesting is because we've done it in a very simple way, where we use WYSIWYG icons to tell you exactly how the bend is going to happen. And many of you may know how difficult it is to get objects to bend the way you want them to in Blender. As I've said in Blender, bending objects can be quite challenging and time consuming where you have to try and do things over and over to try and bend on the chosen direction. It typically requires a use of modifiers or curves and creating an earth sphere from a flat map is particularly difficult. However, with Bendit, this process becomes much simpler and more efficient. But first, let's talk about the basic functionality of Slice It and highlight some new features added since the last version. The original version of Slice It can divide objects in one direction, and then we added a second direction. So you can divide, for instance, an XY plane, and it maintains square divisions, and the new version now supports dividing it in three directions as well. And this is especially useful when creating meshes for displacement maps, as applying a subdivision modifier to meshes with varying face sizes can really cause issues. So by using Slice It, users can quickly generate uniform faces that work well with sub-D modifiers, allowing it for very quick creation of dense meshes for optimal displacement mapping. And that's just one thing it can do. So now let's talk about Bend It. And I think maybe the best way to do that is to demonstrate exactly how it works. Okay, so let's first just go over a little bit of the Slice It functionality. If we select our object and we said we want to go on the ZX plane, so I'm going to go right here. You see we have X here, Z here, and I say slice at 30. So it's going to give me 30 this way, and then I'll just try and do its best to get squares in this direction. That makes sense. If I did 10 and slice it again, you'd see we get 10 this way, and then we're going to get 5 this way. So that's basically how that works. And now if I just move it out a little farther, I go all three and I say slice it, it's going to do the same thing. So I'm trying to get squares on all sides of that. And I know that's the same as if I go over here and basically say, not quite the same, but if I say subdivision surface, simple, and, and then start doing this. But what you'll see is that none of these are really square. And furthermore, we're going to add a bevel on here, move it at the top. And so you can see See, on the edges, we get this real, uh, tons of slices. So what we'd rather do is let's just delete this and let's take this and let's slice it now. And you'll see that's a much better, easier to use mesh. And what that means is that when we want to add displacement to it or bend it or do anything we want to do with it, it'll actually work quite a bit better, right? So one thing I should mention about slicing is that you really want the object to have no rotational aspects to it. So if I go into slice it and I just want to say, let's slice it here. It says object must have no rotation. We're going to get that control A and let's apply the rotation. Then when we slice it, we're going to get the right slice. The other thing I'll mention is that also you can actually select faces to slice. And when you slice it in edit mode, you're just going to slice that face. So I can go here, slice that one. If I want to make this one maybe 20, and I want it to be in the C, Y, Z, and slice it, I'm going to get 20. So anyway, that's another neat feature of Slice It. And now let's talk about Bend It a little bit. So Bend It, we can slice while we bend. So if I look at this, and let's say we want to bend the x-axis, or actually do it this way. If we're going to bend the x-axis, maybe we go, let me get thin like this. So we're going to say we're going to bend it around the x-axis, and I'm going to say, give me a slice every two degrees. So this is how many degrees. Or this says don't slice at all, but this will, if I've already sliced it, I'll turn that off. And the bend scale is how far. So if 0.5 is going to be 180 degrees, and if I hit bend it, you'll see that it's going to do something weird. And that's because it's very difficult to tell which direction to bend it. So we just say flip and bend it, undo, flip and bend it, and that'll get it. So that's why that is. And that's because sometimes an object might be like this, and this bend it will actually work correctly. So the, the objects can actually be facing different directions, but what you will notice is that it does go ahead and it creates the correct number of slices in the direction that we want it to bend. In this case, it's every two degrees. So I'm going to undo that. So now you understand bend it and flip and bend. Let's just make it one here and we'll just say bend it. And that'll make a complete circle. And we might want to add a, a weld modifier to just to weld it. Just go in here and say, and that'll seal it up. Also, notice that. This is the curve right here. I mean, that's the curve that we're using to bend it. So I can take that curve and I can scale it and do things with it also. So that's another thing to keep in mind. 
And the other thing I can do is I can open the curve. So this is neat. So when I open the curve, I've got this. Let's just tab into this curve. And let's just go X, delete this one. And I'll delete this one. And I'll delete this. Okay. And I'll take this one and let's rotate it. So it's just 90 and bring it down somewhere like this. And they say maybe over, that might matter. Say E. And if I move it E, I'm extruding it, right? So I can E, R, E, R that. And then all I need to do is just go back out of this, take this object, and we're just going to move this along here, and I can move it right around that object. So that's really cool. That's how I made this uh, little cable right here, as you can see. That's how that's done. So the, the open curve feature is a really neat feature also. And then, obviously, when we're done with our bend, I can say bake bend, and now basically this is just a complete mesh. There's nothing we can edit it at any stage anymore. So that's bend it. So one control that's that works with both bend it and slice it is this wireframe. So let's say we want to basically slice this in all three axes, and let's give it 40, and we'll select that object, and we'll say slice it. Now we don't know how dense that mesh is. We have no idea, and that's what this button does. It just toggles on the wireframe. It's literally the exact same thing as right here toggling this. It just gets, it just puts it right here. So we have a real fast way of looking at it. Let's just talk for a second and show you a little bit about how this tire was done. It was done actually with just a very simple image. So this image was brought in as image to plane so I could basically create a polygon. I used the actual polygon that this was on and to, just to get the aspect ratio correct. And this was the actual plane that had the, uh, image on it. And so we took that plane and I basically add just a little thickness and then I bent it and I used the open curve setting to, to build this. And I converted the curve to a mess, went ahead and mirrored it so I could get it exactly right the way I wanted to, then curve, converted it back to a curve. And it just automatically lines up like that. And then it's a real simple thing to, I can bake this and then turn that directly into the tire tread using a 360 bend around the Y axis right here. So if I select this and let's just make it, so let's look at the wireframe, see what we have. Yeah, we have a pretty dense mesh, but we don't have anything going in that direction. And I might just, just get it on the side here. Let's look at it close and we'll go into slice it, maybe put it Z. I want to, I want to go all the way across this way. Actually Z would go this way. I want to go across the X axis. So let's do X. And what I'll do is I know I want this to go a circle. So I want it to be like one every degree. So I'm going to make it 360 and I'll slice it. Now I could also just leave this here on the slice setting here, but sometimes this will actually, depending on the, what it's doing, it may add a second, a second slice. So if I'm going to do two bends, I'll always on the second one, I'll always manually make sure that I get it correct. There we go. So that looks pretty good. And now it's really just a very simple matter of we want to bend it around the Y axis like we're showing right here. And the bend scale is going to be one. I don't need slice turned on. I just say bend it. And it goes almost instantaneously. And I'll go ahead and as we mentioned earlier, I want to add a weld. Got rid of that little seam right in there. And that's really it. Now the issues just apply the correct displacement maps. And if you haven't seen my ghost in the shell videos, you might check that out for how to create and apply displacement maps as well as optimize them basically generate them in a way that you can later on optimize them so you can get much lower triangle count. So that's the new Slice It, Bend It, and you can get it at Blender Market. And I hope you like the video. And if you have any questions, jump over on our Discord and ask them. And we we'll look forward to seeing you online. Bye.